Hold on, it's coming. Hey guys, and welcome back to another week of Ledger AMAs. Today I am here with our very own CEO, Pascal Gauthier. We have so much to talk about. He's a busy guy, hence why we were a little bit late, guys. Come on, we're meeting with the CEO. What did you expect? But he's here now. We have so many questions to ask him. So Pascal, how are you today? I'm great, sorry that I was late, but also we had technical difficulties to connect. And so yeah. hence, uh, we are super late. I hope that you enjoy my background. I'm actually in Tahiti as I speak to you right now and uh, having a blast in confinement. Uh, the reality is that I'm in Paris and I've been stuck at home forever now, but uh, life is good. Happy to be here. Perfect, thank you. Ledger, um, Pascal, could you start us off with what is Ledger's ambition and what is Ledger's mission? Okay, cool. Hey, just a quick question, uh, because I only see you here. How do I see other people and eventually question they have, like YouTube doesn't support that? Um, it does. I will send you the link so you can see the questions people are asking as well. Okay, because I, you know, if we can keep this interactive, it would be great. Uh, well, Anyways, uh, the ambition of Ledger is to become uh, one of the biggest tech company that was ever built uh, out of Europe. That's our ambition. But I guess that you know, Ledger at heart is a security company. Uh, and what we want is to bring security for this new class of uh, assets. Uh, we believe that there is, a, with Bitcoin, there is something that has been created, which is the possibility for the end user to actually own a digital asset. And we call this critical digital assets. We believe Bitcoin was probably the first one, but there'll be many to come in the future. And we believe that it's important that as a user, you can then own your assets. You can own your Bitcoin. Eventually you can own your data. You can own your digital identity. And uh, our vision, that's our vision at Ledger. And our mission is to make sure that you can actually own this with maximum security and to make it very easy to use as well. Uh, because all of these technologies sometimes are a bit clunky. And I'm not saying that the Ledger product is perfect today, but we're certainly trying our best to make it to make all of this very easy to use. And so, the in the long term, uh, you know, we we believe that users will claim back uh, their digital sovereignty, uh, and that's and we're building the tools for that. Awesome. And could you sort of explain to everyone the Ledger strategy? The Ledger strategy. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Good. Uh, ledger strategy is in uh, two twofold. There is the consumer business that we have, the enterprise business. The consumer business, everyone. I mean, everyone. People know about it because it's the Ledger Nano S, the Ledger Nano X, and the Ledger Live as the uh, software companion experience. And so that's that's a product that's been designed for an individual use. Uh, and that's the product that we've been known for. We sold now more than 1.8 million of those uh, little digital safes and hundreds of thousands of people connect uh, every week and every month on Ledger Live. Uh, and so that's one business. And the other business is the Ledger Vaults. So it's the same principle uh, that applies, but for uh, the enterprise. Uh, and so certainly the question is, you're not the only one to have access to crypto. You are several people that need to have access to crypto. And the Ledger Nano doesn't do that job because there is one private key and one recovery seed phrase per Ledger Nano. So therefore, if you share that, you share the secret. So therefore you don't know who, who accesses the coin when. Uh, so you can't use a Ledger Nano uh, in for that example. And what you can use is the Ledger Vault. So same type of security, but with a layer of governance on top, uh, which allows access to certain users with administrators on one side, operators on the other. But the layer of governance is the one thing that we do with Ledger Vault. And Pascal, could you dive more into Ledger Vault and sort of go into the B2B business? How does that work? What is the future for that? Sure. Uh, so when we say B2B, actually, it, it, it opens so many doors. I think that um, 
there is what the product does today and the clients of today, and then there's what the product will do tomorrow and the clients of tomorrow. In general, this business is evolving uh, with technology, of course. Uh, it started with technology and it's evolving with technology. From Bitcoin only, we went to Ethereum. From Bitcoin Ethereum, we went to thousands of coins today. Um, and so that's one part of the business. The other part of the business is probably security tokens. Uh, large financial institutions wanting to tokenize assets uh, and to use the blockchain technology, uh, whether it's private or public, to build the security tokens. Uh, and government coins is another uh, example of, uh, you know, blockchain enabling um, products and or features. Uh, and so you have crypto security tokens, government coins. Um, and so the long-term view is that Ledger Vault uh, is a technology uh, that operates software as a service. Uh, that allows, you know, same level of security, ease of use, governance for all these type of applications. So whether you want to hold a Bitcoin and or transact with, with a government coin, you should be able to use uh, Ledger Vaults for your security, uh, for your governance, for your liquidity management. It will be a central piece in your um, security and uh, management infrastructure if you're if you're a large financial institution. Um, and so that's the vision for the future. What it is right now is actually uh, a great uh, cold storage uh, uh, solution. Uh, if you're a financial institution, and so today a financial institution probably means like a crypto hedge fund, an exchange, uh, you know, those uh, companies that are involved in the world of crypto, uh, and usually, you know, the cold storage, either they do it themselves or they use a Ledger Nano to do it. Uh, so you, you, you probably should use Vault instead of doing it yourself or use a Ledger Nano because, you know, we, we've done the job and so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, and it's cheap too compared to what you pay if you do it yourself. And it's much more secure than if you use Ledger Nano. Um, and so that's what Vault does today. And in the near future, because we have developed a set of APIs that will be made available uh, with your Ledger Vault, it's not just the cold storage that you'll be able to do, but it's everything from cold to warm to a hot wallet and automated transactions on top of the Vault read and write. Uh, and so that's, that's very exciting. It's, that's the next uh, version of the product that we'll deliver in the next few weeks, few months. Awesome, thank you. And can you tell us about um, the crypto industry for tomorrow, the future of the crypto industry? Can you tell us what we will be expecting to see? Uh, that's the trick question. Uh, well, the, the, the honest answer is I don't really know um, because, because it's hard to predict. I mean, you know, anyone who could predict the crypto industry um, will be very rich or will become very rich, I guess. Um, you know, I think the prediction I've already made, I think what's interesting is, you know, from, from, from Bitcoin and sort of blockchain technology, now it emulates a lot of use cases. It will be interesting to see how they go to market. Again, security tokens, government coins, Libra, you know, uh, that seems to be the future, the immediate future for, for, for crypto. And when I say immediate future, it's the next five years uh, because you know, technologies are here, the deployment of these technologies and the infrastructure around these technologies uh, need to be sort of adapted so, so you can actually take those technologies to, to the mass. Um, and so I think that the, the near future is this and it's already written, like you have all these new protocols you know, Tezos, Cosmos, Polkadot, and so on and so forth coming in the crypto space. You have the elder protocol like, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum still sort of thriving and having the next version of the protocol. Um, we sort of lightning liquid for Bitcoin and Ethereum too uh, coming maybe this year. Uh, so that's sort of super interesting already in the crypto world. And we already know what the evolutions will be in terms of technology. We do, just don't know uh, what's going to, what impact is going to have in the market, and you know what are the applications that will be built, built on top of those protocols, uh, and use the the latest protocol features to uh, 
to emulate just better products for, for the consumers. That's one thing. And then security token is uh, definitely, you know, another thing where most of the financial industry is, is pushing towards that future. Uh, and there, there are many uncertainties, whether it's going to run on private blockchains, public blockchains, uh, there are many projects. And of course, everyone is sort of fighting to become the uh, de facto solution. So that's, that's going to be interesting to watch, but this is definitely next five years. And finally, government coins with you know China number one right now. I think they have been deploying already the crypto yuan in four provinces uh, and soon going to eight. Um, and that's going to be probably the first live at scale experiment of, of a government coin, if I'm not mistaken. And so, what impact that's going to have on the world, and you know what Libra, what different Libra is going to make. All of this is in the making, and will be rolled out uh, sort of probably sooner than later, actually, but next five years for sure. Perfect, thank you. And could you tell us, do you believe in crypto mass adoption? Oh yeah, 100%. And plus we are going to have the answer very soon. I mean, you know, crypto has been designed to be resilient. Crypto has been designed on the back of the 2008 financial crisis. We probably have the 2020, 2021 financial crisis coming our way. So, you know, um, so, so now that crypto has matured a lot, uh, it will be interesting to see how it adapts to this new crisis and how many new retail investors, uh, users actually coming in the space. Uh, but I think what's going to happen in the next uh, few months will be interesting and probably critical for the future of the, of the crypto industry. And the answer of whether it's going to become something, you know, mass adoption or not, We'll, what, some of the answers will come in the next few months and answers will also come in the future because it's about, you know, sort of building protocols and, you know, the internet protocol existed a long time before, you know, we had sort of Facebook. And if you remember the internet in 2000 or, you know, 1995, and you look at the internet today, let's say 2000, so that's only 20 years. Uh, it seems crazy. I mean, you know, uh, not everyone had, uh, cell phones in 2000, uh, you know, and everyone has cell phones today. So, you know, the pace of innovation actually goes very fast and crypto in 20 years, I think we'll be amazed with the applications that uh, that we'll see. I mean, Facebook is what, 2004 uh, and Facebook as we know it today, it took 16 years. Um, and we can all agree that using Facebook in 2004 and using Facebook today is a much different uh, experience. Uh, technology has evolved. Infrastructures have evolved. We're going for, from 4G to 5G. Makes will make you know our phones even faster. We will be able to watch video on the phone. I mean, to watch video on the phone is something actually pretty new. You know, past I don't know past five years or something. Um, so you know, interestingly, the protocols evolve. So then the applications on top top of protocol can evolve. I think we're still in the protocol phase today. Uh, you know, it would be in very interesting when we enter the uh, applicative phase uh, uh, to see what is actually the product that, that is designed for, for, for the end user. Um, so uh, Ledger will have a role to play in this because we believe that Ledger Live is part of uh, those applications that are being built on top of protocols that make life of the user much easier. Uh, and Ledger Live should become your sort of primary wallet to manage your crypto and to connect your crypto then to the rest of your financial world, long-term vision. Um, but, uh, but, but there will certainly be many other applications that will be built on top of these protocols and that's gonna be very interesting to watch. Perfect. And Pascal, will financial institutions go into blockchain, blockchain and crypto? Well, I guess blockchain and crypto are two different things. Will they go into blockchain? Yes. Will they go into crypto? Probably, uh, but uh, you know, blockchain is what sort of enables security tokens. Um, and so, so that's an easy answer. I think every bank will go into security token because it's just uh, a very interesting piece of technology to lower down the costs of infrastructures that they have every day to move uh, securities around, I guess, uh, something like that. Uh, will they go into, Crypto and Bitcoin, uh, I think it's already the case for many large financial institutions in the US. And so 
I don't see why not in the future. Uh, it's just that some large financial institutions today still make a difference between crypto and blockchain. Blockchain security token is okay, crypto is not okay. But I think in time, uh, if retail keeps on coming in, you know, uh, large financial institutions will be sort of pushed to figure out what to do with this. You can already see that um, neo banks like Revolut, for example, offer uh, crypto in a certain way to their consumers. But, but today on Revolut, you can have um, your fiat money and your crypto money in, in one app. So you don't own your private keys yet on Revolut for sure, but still it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's probably a, a glimpse into the future of what banks probably will have or should offer to, to their clients in the near future. And once you have one bank doing it, the other bank will do it. And you have a snowball effect. Uh, and that's gonna, I think that's gonna go very quickly. Uh, as, as soon as you have you know, five or 10% of a population that uses crypto in a given country, it's gonna be hard for banks to look away and especially if they're being pushed by competition. Um, so, you know, Revolut right now is probably competition for most of the retail banks, if Revolut does crypto, you know, uh, that could become a competitive advantage uh, and other banks won't be able to look away too long. Thank you. And people were wanting to know what are the different scenarios you would be considering if in fact the banks do go in that direction? Uh, so the question is what, what are the different scenarios Say again what the difference, question, no, I'm so sorry. What different scenarios are you considering for Ledger in that aspect? Oh, in that aspect of things. Well, you know, banks will need technology. So, you know, this is Ledger Vault and this is the enterprise division. So, you know, uh, banks could decide to build their own technology or to, you know, buy technology from, from vendors just like Ledger. So, and my advice to any banks thinking about doing this is for you to, to buy from Ledger and, and not build internally. Um, but um, from Ledger and or for, uh, from another vendor that they, uh, they think is worth it. But um, um, yeah, so the, the role of Ledger will be to provide technology to, to big financial institutions so they can actually you know, have the infrastructure to accept the deposit of bitcoins and to and and to build like you know a, a front end for their clients to connect to a, a back end that they will have developed with the help of ledger that's that's the future that we see uh for us uh in that world and then the question will be for the end user you know whether you want to deposit your bitcoins with your local hsbc branch and you know they'll manage it for you or you still want to have your bitcoins with your ledger because i you know i think those two value propositions will remain probably in the future and but are very different. There is a question of you know digital sovereignty. And so you know that you can trust your money uh, with your bank. And there are a lot of pros in doing this. The cons is you know the money is not really yours, and you need to have, you know, the bank needs to grant you access and permission for you to access your own money. So you know there are pros and cons. But you cannot lose the money, and the bank will make you will probably reimburse you the money if they lose it. So you know, you can flash your ID and get your money back somehow. Um, but owning your private key is really when you own Bitcoin. And of course, it comes with a, uh, with a bit of work on your side as a user, because suddenly you need to, to do your own security. And so again, that has pros and cons. You, the Bitcoin are yours, nobody can seize them. It is, it is why you should be in crypto, uh, but you have to be now mindful of your money and of your coins. Thank you. And can you talk about the crypto reaction to the COVID pandemic? The crypto reaction to, uh, you mean the, the crypto, like, you know, Bitcoin going up and down because yes, of, exactly. of COVID? Yes. Um, well, I think I don't worry too much about the price. What I can say about this is, you know, what we've seen at Ledger is a, a continuous influx and then a higher influx of people after the confinement. Um, so new people coming into the market. Uh, so we basically sold much more nanos as we were getting into the crisis and the confinement. Uh, January was here, February was higher, March was higher, April was higher, and May looks like it's gonna be even higher. Um, and so 95% uh, 
of the people that we're seeing today are new customers. Uh, so just new people coming into crypto or people that we ledger had never seen before uh, that probably worry about the security or owning their private keys. Um, and so, and actually that has happened regardless of the price, the price went up and down and up and down. Well, and I don't, we, we're not a, a financial company. So we're just like everyone. We look at the price going up and down and we, we, we don't, um, we don't comment on this because many things can can impact the price, and that's not for us to say. Us to say, but what we can say is, a lot of new people are actually coming into the game, uh, and that's uh, that's something that looks like the beginning of 2017 when we started to see the, the bull run in 2017. We had like an increase. Uh, a higher percentage of like new buyers and a lot of lot more people coming into the space uh, before it went completely ballistic and we we can start to see this trend and the great thing is like it's completely decorrelated from the price uh, you know in our previous 24 months sometimes when the price was going up our sales were going up price going down sales going down and what we've seen in the recent months is regardless of the price going up or down, the sales continue going up just because the people are coming into the market right now. Uh, and much more than, uh, than what we've seen in the past, uh, you know, sort of 18 months. Uh, so, so that's very interesting to see. And, and for us, we believe that uh, this is still a retail market uh, until, you know, uh, until it becomes uh, probably a more balance between you know, retail and enterprise, but uh, this is still a retail market and we can see a big influx of, uh, of people paying attention to Bitcoin and crypto today. Thank you. And people would like to know, how did you manage the COVID crisis at Ledger? What actions did you take? What, what game plan did you have? Um, well, first, we reacted fast because we, we cover, like we have a team in Hong Kong and of course team in France and a team in New York. And so we could see the evolution of COVID. Like, you know, of course we were first sort of alarmed by, by our team in Hong Kong and they were telling us like firsthand what was happening there. And so we were, I guess, uh, warned. Um, and so we didn't, we, we didn't take, uh, we didn't take it lightly. And so therefore we, we, we reacted pretty quickly to to the crisis with always the same principle, which is, you know, safety, safety and health first, uh, uh, to then ensure business continuity uh, and uh, and continue on uh, providing a service to our customers. Um, so uh, that's that's how we approached. That's how we approached. Uh, uh, that's how we approached uh, this, um, and uh, and uh, and yeah. I mean, I think that's that's the answer that I have. Like safety and health, ensuring business continuity, uh, and making sure that we were able to keep on sending, you know, product in a safe way to to our consumers, um, and planning for cash. Okay, also planning for cash, making sure that. You know, regardless of what happened in the future and how bad the crisis sort of hits uh, uh, hits us and hits the market, that we have enough cash to see through the crisis without letting people down. So without letting our people down, and you know, not firing anyone at Ledger, we actually hired um, I think 28 people uh, since the beginning of the year, and we're onboarding 18 people during the lockdown. So you know, we onboarded people that work from home, but uh, we, we maintain the business and we maintain the growth of the business. And we're still recruiting people today. Uh, so we have an extra 10 people that we want to recruit in the next uh, few weeks, few months. Uh, so making sure that uh, we can continue on growing the business and but but also but planning for cash, making sure that, uh, that we have enough cash should anything happen, why we continue on recruiting. So it's quite a difficult exercise to you know, keep on spending money while saving enough money for the future, but we, we've done that and we, we're quite happy with, with the result and we're happy that we recruited uh, 20 people uh, since the beginning of the year and onboarded and recruited so many people during the, the lockdown. I think it's important uh, for the future and it's important that some businesses actually uh, thrive and pay taxes because that's gonna be part of also uh, the post-COVID crisis. Perfect. 
Guys who are tuned in watching, now is your time to write Pascal your questions that you have for him because we are gonna start with that now. Uh, so Pascal, the first question that someone had was, could we get Monero support in Ledger Live? I know it's a technical challenge for sure. So yeah, it's a technical challenge. Uh, it is not in the immediate plans because really it's it's really complex. We're already supporting Monero with the Nano S, so uh, you can already use like the Ledger products and then a third-party software to to manage your Monero. And there is a Monero app that exists, but we have no immediate plans to support Monero in Ledger Live. Perfect. The next question is, why don't you have more staking solutions? Dude, because it takes time and, and efforts. Uh, we, we had zero and now we have Tezos and Tron and we have a very aggressive roadmap to support more uh, staking coins. Um, actually on Tezos, I think we've done a good job and we have so much Tezos being delegated through Ledger Live today. It's uh, it's really a great achievement. We're, we're very pleased with I mean, we're very pleased with the uh, with, with the service in the way that a lot of people seem to use it. So that's great. Uh, apparently, Tron the community is really happy with the work that we've done, and we have many other staking coins that we are planning on integrating in the near future. So um, sometimes, you know, technology just takes time to to develop and 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 to put live. But 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 before the end of the year, you you have the main staking coins um, on Ledger Live for sure. Awesome. Next question is crypto conversion to stablecoin anytime soon? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, first, uh, most stablecoins are actually supported by Ledger Live, and we're about to, um, you know, sh sort of share that more broadly because I don't think people necessarily know, uh, and and probably you know give stablecoin like a different like view into in, into ledger live so you know people understand that they can have their crypto and their stable coins that are also crypto but you see what i mean and then the ability to swap between crypto and stable coin is a uh, is a swap capability that we're integrating today and that you should see before uh before the end of june cool Next question, are smartphone manufacturers using their secure elements in conjunction with their own UI wallet? Um, and is that a threat to Ledger? Uh, so that's a, that's, a, that's a tough question. So are they using, yes and no, they're using different things, uh, mostly the uh, TEE, as far as I understand. Uh, and there are a few phones that are blockchain today in the market. HTC is probably uh, has done the most uh, elegant product there. Me personally, I mean, I don't see uh, a lot of tractions. I've never seen anyone using that product. Uh, I've never seen any comments on, on those products. I don't think that they're, uh, they're really mainstream. Also, there is a big question on having your crypto on your phone, you know, whether you wanna carry your wealth with you everywhere you go or you want to separate that and you know have it have your wealth on a safe at home and so your and your phone is probably good for payment and and other things but there is a I, I think we still don't really know what's the answer to that but i think we're working hard to uh to to bring new products in the market in 2021 uh, hardware products will there be you know will there be a ledger phone i don't know maybe uh but uh, but but right now we don't see uh, blockchain phones having a lot of traction. I have to say. Uh, so, is it a threat? You know, we consider everything being a threat. We're very paranoid. So we 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 we're looking at this, but we feel that the technology is not quite there yet, and we don't even think that there is still a question on whether people really want to have all of their bitcoins on their phone with them all the time. You know, personally, I don't, uh, and I think. Uh, it could be still like um, two things. You could have like you know something on your phone for payment, and but you could have like the rest of your coins at home on your ledger wallet. So we're thinking we're thinking hard about all of these things, and we will release probably a new hardware in 2021. But we actively working on it, and in 21 you have some of the answers for sure. Okay. Next question is: As privacy is eroding speedily. 
Do you believe privacy tokens will be outlawed in favor or more traceable blockchains? Uh, it's an impossible question for me to answer. It's a valid question. I just don't know the answer. Uh, I don't think so. My, my guess is I don't think so, but uh, to be seen. But great question. Next question is how does Ledger Nano, uh, how does Ledger Nano compare in respect to other crypto wallets? Uh, to other crypto hardware wallets or to hardware crypto wallet. yes. hardware wallets? Uh, well, it's better. Uh, well, you know, I, I think uh, two things. One, security is paramount. So, and we believe that security of your hardware wallet should be not being able to extract private keys from your hardware wallet, regardless of the situations. Um, so typically, if I get access to your hardware wallet, can I extract private keys? So we've demonstrated that it's possible with with hardware wallets that are in the market today. It's not possible today with a, with a Ledger hardware wallet. So I think in terms of security, and if you compare Ledger to many of the other players um, uh, in the market, we, we rank pretty high in terms of security. Uh, there is also a, a big question behind hardware wallets because we see Sort of new competitors every day and that's cool and so you know you have a lot of teams that are actually working on that problem which shows that uh, there is a category uh, in in terms of you know what, what's a hardware wallet and what is it good for there's a lot of emulation in the market and we're very respectful to everything that the competition is doing in that regard but we also know that um, what's very difficult for a hardware wallet is to to be trusted to have the the certifications that at some point, you need to prove that the technology actually works um, and to have operations uh, that allows you to scale. It's, it's very, I would say it's easy to sell 5,000 hardware wallets. Um, it's very difficult to sell millions of hardware wallets everywhere in the world and maintain like a very high level of services and maintain the innovation that is necessary to also develop this Ledger Live and the companion app and integrate all these coins, you know, all of this uh, is actually quite expensive to do, I would say. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when you when you compare two hardware wallets, you should not only compare the technology of the hardware wallet itself, but also, you know, the service that the company can provide to you, uh, the scalability of that service, and the the features that are implemented into the companion software, and the scalability of those features. And I think you know you have to to decide what's best for you, but uh, I would I would say that we're trying to build a standard and I think the industry needs standards. Um, and so therefore I think that Ledger is pretty well positioned uh, to become a standard of this industry as far as hardware wallet goes. But in the Ledger Live experience that we're designing, we also want to become like a, a software standard with, a, with your Ledger Nano being a 2FA, like, a, um, being a validator for your transaction, but the software is very important. And the experience that you have in Ledger Live is gonna be, uh, we're working hard on making that experience you know, better uh, every week. Uh, and I, I, I hope, certainly hope that people can see that. And we've, we've gotten recently a lot of feedback where people see that the experience on Ledger Live is increasingly getting better. And the question that I had before on, on staking coins, for example, is one example of that, like we support a few now but will support much more in the future and so therefore uh, uh, as soon as ledger live supports all of your coins staking um, staking features you know buying features swapping features that will become an interesting uh, a software value proposition on its own thank you someone's next question was i would like to know your sale and delivery support policies during the time of disease outbreak Uh, it's all very well documented on the website. I mean, I I don't have a, a specific answer to that question. I could I could say that uh, we've documented it to, to say that uh, it's all safe and sort of secure the way that we uh, that we do this uh, in in Vierzon, and we make sure that uh, our employees work with the um, 
with the maximum of health and safety measures to protect themselves for sure, but also our customers. Um, uh, and we are we have maintained relationship with uh, with the supply chain, uh, you know, DHL and 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 everyone that helps us do delivery everywhere in the world. And they have like you know very strong protocols now to to handle this this crisis. So I would say that when you're getting something from us, you can be sure that uh, uh, it's been done with the professionalism that you can expect from Ledger and with the uh, increased level of security and health measures that you can expect during this COVID crisis. Someone's next question is, can we have a Ledger giveaway? And also there are fake Ledger giveaways on YouTube. What are we doing to against that? Uh, can we have a ledger giveaway? I think we just did one with Tezos, if I'm not mistaken. So we, we do some sometimes. So you know, check our check our Twitter just to and or and or our website um, to know what we're doing and make sure that you're always checking, you know, you know, our own Twitter, our own website, and you know, make sure that you always use the ledger product with. Uh, everything that Ledger, uh, you know, uh, says, or the the appropriate communication channels that Ledger uh, uses, and you know, when it comes to scams, uh, you know, we're talking about we're talking about money. So around money, there there will always be scams, uh, and so you know, people have to be very careful, and you know, trust only Ledger or the tools that Ledger gives you. Never trust like a third party. Never trust like a weird video on YouTube and if you see that video on YouTube, always double check with with the website, with our customer success team, uh, with uh, with our Twitter that we actually promoting the event and that, that is actually coming from us. Uh, that's that's one side of the answer. The other side of the answer, we actively looking with our um, uh, with our legal team what we can do uh, about this and how we can better work with with Google, uh, typically on that topic, so they can act sort of faster than what they do today. Uh, but that's uh, but that's a very important topic, and we are on it as well from from that angle. And the legal team is is uh, is actively uh, pursuing discussions uh, with the relevant parties, so we make sure that we can, like, when we see uh, those scams, we can act fast to make sure that they disappear as quickly as possible. Awesome. Someone asked, what are the plans for Ledger Blue going forward? Uh, it's a vague question. Uh, so th there is a, there, we, we've already documented the plans for Ledger Blue going forward. Uh, there are a, a few things that we'll be doing this year to uh, make sure that you can um, use your ledger blue in the best of its capacity uh, but it's not a product but we really say that it's not a product that will be continuing so it's a product that has been discontinued we'll be supporting ledger blue for sure uh, there is a program where you can replace your ledger blue with a nano x uh, if you prefer to continue uh, with a with a flagship product uh, and not the ledger blue uh, well uh, and and you can and, and we'll regularly update uh people on that situation but if you have a more specific question on ledger blue and something that you worry about you can always uh, send a question to our customer success team and you can find uh, the link on the website awesome we have a few more questions for you the next one is will ledger implement qrl features to protect other assets from post-quantum attacks i'll pass on that question <laughs> Pass. Okay. Um, the next question is, could we get a fiat value on USDT on Ledger Live? Also dark mode on mobile. Dark mode on mobile, we're working on it. Uh, fiat value, we'll take that question. And, uh, you know, I don't have a, a straight up answer. I'm not. Um, so the, the short answer should be yes, we should be able to do it. But I, I, I don't know when but also i don't really understand the question so we'll take that question and and we'll reply at some point uh but, but again if it's a 
you can send that question to our customer success team. They'll probably have an answer for you. Someone asked, by adopting different coins for the Nano, could there, any, could there be any probable chances for a security breach? No, because all coins are, you know, the technology of the Nano makes it that all coins are integrated into two separate apps and they cannot contaminate each other. So, you know, even if you had like, a, let's say an app with a bug or um, an app cannot be a vector of attack to, uh, to contaminate other apps. So the short answer is no. Okay. Someone had asked, um, let's see here. How about casino coin support? Any plans with that in the near future? No plans with that in the near future. Another question, does Ledger have any real competition? Sure, I mean, you know, the, the, you have a lot of competition coming from other hardware wallet manufacturers and, you know, that's not to be discounted and there is a lot of investments in the space and, you know, we, we want to stay the best at what we do. And so this is why we work hard every day. Uh, but equally with the uh, Ledger Live, uh, what we're doing with Ledger Live, we, we believe that, you know, our competition goes sort of beyond just hardware wallets, but also, you know, software wallet providers, you know, blockchain and everyone else, even Coinbase, um, you know, once you will be able to do all these things that I've mentioned in Ledger Live, whether it's, um, staking swapping buying you know why would you need to go on you know anywhere else so we, we're trying to to bring you the best of what the market has to offer into one single app and ledger guarantees security and then services providers will be plugged on top of ledger life to bring you uh you know the best services in the market so uh, uh and and we want users to have the the freedom of choice you know when you when you do your tezos delegation through through Ledger, you can actually choose the validator that, that you want. Um, we, we don't force you into one validator or we don't force you into a business model that we might have. But like we actually want you to have the choice of choosing your validator uh, because we see this as a service to our customers first and foremost. So we have the same philosophy with everything else. We want to integrate uh, services uh, into the Ledger Live uh, to cater to the needs of our users. Perfect, Pascal. And last and final question, people want to know what is the future for Ledger? Do you have anything exciting, any news coming up? Uh, people just want to know what is the future of Ledger? Well, you know, we discussed the future of Ledger extensively. I mean, you know, five years future, uh, next uh, six months future with a lot of cool stuff that we're integrating into, into Ledger Live. And I also uh, hinted to the fact that there will be new hardware coming in, in 2021 and we'll do our best to do that. So that's, that's already a lot of news that you got here and that you, that you don't see anywhere else because that's, uh, I didn't, blog post about this or I, I didn't do I didn't go to the press to discuss this so so you have it here uh, and nowhere else and that's already plenty of news uh, for Ledger and we, we hope that if you follow us and you use our products you will be able to see uh, the, the recent evolutions and as we integrate more services we, we appreciate the feedback that you can give us on the social networks or directly to our customer success team uh, to help us uh, further improve the products in the future. Perfect. Thanks, guys. You have heard it from Ledger CEO himself, Pascal Gauthier. So we really appreciate you guys tuning in this week. Uh, don't forget, if you have any more questions, please reach out to us on Twitter. You can also go to our website and ask all of your questions there. We will be back here again next week, May 13th, with Jean-Michel talking about finance. Pascal, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you. And don't forget to follow Pascal on Twitter. Um, and if you have any questions, you can add him there. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Pascal. Salut.